Hey everyone. As you see here on the screen, these are some of the original videos that got posted when this channel just started. Uh, a lot of these are older. They're at this time three months old. Uh, they were not great. <laughs> if any of you are watching some of the more recent videos we've uploaded, um, they've gotten a lot better as I've learned more. And I thank you guys so much for your patience with me as I've gone on this journey with you all. As such, even though these are older videos, these topics were really good. So I've decided to go back and re-record them with better audio, better aspect ratio, uh, and just to go back over some of these topics. They're not, the old ones were not just up to the current quality standards, and there were various issues with them. So we're not just doing a re-record. I'm going back over these topics one by one uh, and reintroducing them with some maybe some updated content or some new things that we've learned. Uh, so I really encourage you to watch this video uh, to support it, this way others can see it. These old videos we're going to start sunsetting and eventually replacing with all the new uploads. So I thank you guys for sticking with this channel. Thank you for liking and subscribing. And thank you so much for being patient with me as I got better at this. And now I go back and work on the early things that I posted again. Thank you guys so much. And please enjoy this re-recorded video of an originally great topic. Hey everybody, today we're going to be looking at simplified Docker management using a container management system called Dockage. I'm not sure if you guys have ever heard of Dockage before, but it's pretty cool. It's great for beginners. So right now I'm in my Trinos instance, I have no apps available. And the main way that people will probably do apps in this instance is going to be through the apps catalog. So for example, if I'm going to do a radar instance here, the apps catalog allows me to install like this. So this is sometimes confusing and can be difficult for users, especially if they don't know where things go or where things should go. So the easier way to do this, I think, in my opinion, um, is to use Dockage. I think it's a little more straightforward than this, especially if you're familiar with Docker Compose. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over to apps and I wanna show you guys the data sets I have in here first. So I have two data sets that are gonna be important. One is for configs, the other is for stacks. So stacks is gonna be where Dockage puts all of our Docker Compose files. That's where they're gonna live. Uh, we have an option of keeping all of our configurations within the stacks directory or using the configs. So in this case, I'm gonna add a data set here uh, because I'm gonna be using radar as an example. So let's come out over here and let's come over to apps and this is how this data set's gonna work. Just like that. So I'm gonna show you guys both options. So I'm going to come over here to apps and I'm going to install an app and I'm going to call it dockage like that. This is the app I want to install. I'm going to change the web port <clears throat> to 5001 because that's the default port. This is the stocks, the stack storage. This is the data storage. Uh, I'm not going to need to worry about the data storage per se. Not so much. What I'm going to do is I'm going to definitely change the stack storage because I need to do that. I need to change that to a host path called stacks. Okay. I'm going to leave the data storage as an IX. If you want to create a separate host path for that, you can, just like I did for stacks. Everything else I'm going to leave the same. I'm not going to touch anything. I'm going to install. Okay, now I'm up and running. In the separate tab, I'm going to open up the wiki because it's got all the Docker Compose files I need. And you can use Docker Compose files from anywhere. I'm just going to use these because I know they work. So this is the Radar Docker Compose file. I'm just going to copy this. So if I'm on... Dockage. Actually, I shouldn't have copied that yet because I got to open it. Let's come in here. Uh, the username and the password. Now, the password has got to be pretty strong. You just can't. I can't use my usual insecure ones that I would use for the purposes of these videos. So I'm just going to use a secure password that I'm generating. Now we can pop out a compose file. So we're going to grab our compose file and in Dockage we're going to create a new compose stack. Now you will see there's something active here right now. This is Dockage from TrueNOS. So one thing I will tell you about container management systems is they do not cross over. Whether you're using the TrueNOS apps catalog, the TrueNOS custom YAMLs, Dockage, or Portainer, no one will be able to manage anybody else's Docker containers. So if you have a Docker container on TrueNOS like this one, and it's showing you this app, this uh, container right here. Dockage will not be able to manage it because it was not created with TrueNOS. See, the stack was not made by Dockage. So because it was made by TrueNOS, it won't be able to be adjusted here. And that's fine. But just know that if you choose to use Dockage and a mix of uh, TrueNOS apps or whatever mix of container management you use, whatever you create within that management system is what's going to be able to manage it. <clears throat> so let's come over here to create a new Compose file. I'm going to call this Radar. And over here is where I'm going to paste my Compose file paste. 
cool. We have the option to add some environment variables down here if you want. I'm not going to add any right now. I want you to ignore this whole section for networks because it's not functional. Dockage is a work in progress that's made by a man named Lewis Lamb who makes Uptime Kuma, which is amazing. Dockage is his latest project and is still under development, so this section does not work yet. So don't worry about that. So, <clears throat> over here, this is going to be our Docker Compose file. You can see here I have it running as apps, PUID and PGID. That's because anything we create is in true NAS involving containers is going to want to use the apps user and group. I have set the configs directory and the media directories. Now, these are incorrect. In this case, uh, I need to change these. So, if I want to store the configuration for radar in the stacks directory that I created right here, I'm going to leave this the same. You see this little dot right here? This means in the directory I'm already in. And because when I set up Dockage, I set it up to use the stacks directory that I created, this little period represents the stacks directory, which means this little period stands for slash mount slash tank slash stacks. All that is contained in that little period. So we have an option here. We can leave it like that or we can change it. If I want to change it to the configs folder here for radar, I will show you how to do that now. In this case, it's going to be the name of my, let's put it mount first, and the name of my pool, which is going to be tank. Uh, and then the directory it's under, configs. And then here it's under radar. That is the full path of this host path right here. Mount, tank, configs, radar. So if I want to store the configuration file there, that's the way it would work. Now media, media is also incorrect. There is no slash media here. Where's the media folder? Media is mount tank media. So let's make an adjustment here. Slash mount slash pool name slash media. This is now correct. Now I can deploy the stack. It's going to pull and show me everything that's going on. So this is what's going on right now in the background. It's pulling. It'll show me how much it's pulling. In this case, it's 77.5 megabytes. This is the output from the terminal. You can see it's doing a whole bunch of stuff. It's setting everything up for me right now. I can use this button to bash into, con into the container, which means this is radar. This is everything that's in radar. Let's jump back out. And this button will show me, this shows me it's running, and this will show me the IP on the port. So it's running on 7878 because that's what I told it to do right here. So let's click 7878, and here is Radar. So that's how I deploy a stack. <clears throat> now, this is a single compose file. If you want, there's the option of doing more than one. So I can come in here and just continue to copy and paste as many different services as I want. This is a really easy way to manage stacks. So in the event that I want to do more composes, I can just click this. There's another really cool feature here that converts to a compose. So if you have a docker run command, I can paste the run and then click convert to compose and it'll convert for me. So that's another really cool feature of Dockage that's in here. Dockage also contains something called agents. Say for example, I have multiple machines that are running Dockage. I can deploy containers on those machines right from the single Dockage interface by adding an agent. It's gonna ask me where the agent is and the username and password I did to set up that agent. So in this case, I actually do have another Docker agent running on my other TrueNOS machine. I can set it up here and launch containers on my other other TrueNOS machine right from here. I can manage, delete, add, edit, all of those things. So that's a really, really cool feature that I think is actually quite incredible and works very well. So that's just a really quick overview on Dockage. I like it uh, because I think it's easier to work with in Docker Compose files than it is som sometimes to work with the TrueNOS apps catalog. So I tend to use Dockage a lot for my home deployments. I do have some apps that are I use the catalog for, and it's mainly apps that I use because I need to pass through a GPU. I think it's easier to pass through a GPU using the TrueNOS apps catalog, but for everything else, I use Dockage. So I hope this is informative for you guys. If you like it, please like and subscribe to this channel. If you really want to say thank you, please buy me a coffee.